Welcome to PGC YouTube, Part No. 1S1, Workshop 2023. I'm Ahmed Al Alawi. In few words, this is me, but most of you know me beyond these words. My intention here is to help you as breeders know the best you can through this discussion, through the channels of communications that we have in place. So this is for you, it's not for me. I have selected these topics based on discussion with the board of the club to help you understand more about colors, pigmentation in precise, and then mutations. The style that I adopt is very simple. I put myself in your shoes. 10 years ago, I knew nothing. So I start thinking about the questions that go in your mind. Based on that, I prepare a few slides. But this is not everything. This is just the start of discussion. I am requesting you to make this interaction or to make this session very interactive. Ask. I don't like my voice. I am not a singer. Okay? So ask. Don't feel shy. If you have something that is pressing, stop me. Ask me. Everybody will learn together. Okay? So Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we start. Workshop 2023, Pat Gouldian's Club. Very humble disclaimer that I have kept together, that this is purely for educational purposes. I do not mean to offend anyone. I do not mean to hurt anyone in any way. I have chosen the collateral that will be shared in these slides for the pure intention of education. Our agenda for today, what do I have in mind for us to learn together? Well, first, how do we call a mutation? Very briefly, what's the right way? Let's talk about international standards. Not only Pakistan, not only Bahrain, let's go global. What's the right way of saying this is this bird or that bird? Then, this beautiful bird that you see, I see green. But is it really green? I see purple. Is it purple? If I take a feather, I make it zoomed in and under the telescope, will I see purple? So let's think together. That's the second topic. Then from there, how does the Goldian finch feather look like? From there, we will be looking at the effects on mutations. I have a pastille here in green series, but the classic was much richer. And there is one level of pastille after this, one level further away from classic. Why all this color gets diluted? What happens? We will understand that together today. From here, we talk about the approved mutations for show competitions. You hear all kinds of names, but what is approved? what is not approved. We will talk about that. And I start with head mutation, breast mutations. Then we talk about the green back, the blue back, and we wrap it up with questions that I have selected for you. Okay, so if you don't ask me, I will ask you. Right, with this, let's start. The very important thing I wanted to start my presentation about is misconception. There is a lot of rumors, whether about the bird, or about a mutation, or about a style of breeding. There is a lot, and this is the human nature. When we don't know something, we start assuming. And the assumption becomes the fact, which is very fragile fact. So, does everybody know who this guy is? Who is he? We don't know? So, do you know the king of UK? King Charles. This is his heir. He's the Prince of Wales, right? Prince William. He's his son. He's royal of UK. Big celebrity. Yes, coming from the royal. Now, you would expect that this kind of person would be very diplomatic, you know, he will be very wise in selecting his words, correct? They get trained on that, right? Now, this is him. 
What is he doing? What do you think? This picture is playing. From this picture is That's playing. bad, right? Yes. How do you how do you feel when you see this kind of thing? Unacceptable. Unacceptable. Yes. Thank you. Another angle. Same. Another angle. What happened? Now forget about that. Same guy, another angle. What happened? Acceptable? Acceptable. Not offensive. Moral of the slide. Single-sided stories are extremely dangerous. You see a story from one side. You build your raising your breathing techniques and golden finches on that we are a team this club is the family i learn from you you learn from me we share we exchange why to avoid this okay we have to see the story from all angles you hear somebody saying oh this is aqua cinnamon what aqua cinnamon is this true? This is aqua cinnamon. Oh, this is satini and whatever. Mutations will keep coming in Goldie. Always there is new mutations. Our job is what? Our job is basically to stop the misconception. You seek knowledge from renowned sources. That is super important. Ask. There is big, big organizations, not just people. There is big organizations that can help teach, ask. And then be humble in seeking knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Yusuf, what does he say? وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ Nobody knows everything. You think you know everything, but trust me, you know nothing. I know nothing. Every day I'm learning. So be humble, be kind, don't hurt each other. That's very important. And I'm saying this based on my own personal experience. And then we have lots of references. So we have to validate the references with the facts so that whenever we have a piece of information, it becomes truth. Good so far? Without further ado, let's just start with the first topic in our agenda. Do you want to sit? Do you want to sit? You're sure? So let's now talk about namings. What is this? How do you call this bird? Purple breast. Okay. Green back. Red head. Common bird. Common bird. Why we have all these namings? We are not even 50 people in one room. Everybody is coming from every place, not just Karachi, right? So let's learn properly. So when we go back to our countries and our cities, at least we know something. We have a standard. Do you agree? Yes. So how do we call a blue bird or a green bird? We start with the gender. Is it male or female? You have to say that first. Then head color. Then Back color, green. green. Then, so you said purple breast. That's the last thing we call for a bird. And I'm saying this, this is not my style. This is the standard style. So I can come and say redhead classic, also acceptable. But get used to saying redhead, green back, purple breast. Of course, it's a male. And when I look at this, similar story. Now, I move on. What if it's a pastille? What's the difference between the two? The difference is in the factor. Same topology. Head, first of course the gender, male or female. Then head, back, factor. Is it single factor? Is it double factor? And then the breast. So in this case, for example, we could come and say male, red head, green back, pastille, single factor, purple breast or lilac breast to be precise in this case yes? Yes. yes so when we are dealing with pastilles either blue or green we follow this naming topology good 
The second topic that we have is pigmentation. Do you all agree that Golden Finches is a color finch? It's not a model finch. It's not a size finch. It's not a feather type finch. Rainbow finch, color. Predominantly it's color. Our job is to take care of the color as a breeder and then improve the model, the size, the head, the beak, condition most importantly. But let's not forget, this is a color bird. Rainbow, thank you very much for saying rainbow. It in fact has seven colors. So we have agreed on this fact. Moving on. How does this, this, this bird look like when I strip all these colors? This is how the bird looks like. No colors. No colors, zero. Why I have kept those lines? Because they are the areas where different types of pigments live on the feather and beneath the skin as well. Is my English okay so far? Yes. Yes. Very good. So, let's try to see how does the classic bird look like? That bird in the previous page or this bird. How does it look like if I start naming the pigments? So, to start with, just the mask itself, the mask itself, area, the whole area of the mask, will have pheomelanin and aomelanin. Okay, some people will say, I don't know what's pheomelanin, I don't know what's aomelanin, and I don't want you to be scientists. I am not scientists, okay? Very simple. Pheomelanin is the brown color that is borderline red. It's very, very super, super, super brown. Almost maroon. That's pheomelanin. Those who breed canary finches, Maybe you hear about Feo, 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 yeah, red eye, Feo also the color. It's called Feo because it's the Latin, right? They call it basically a very rich maroon-like brown. Aomelanin is everything black. Simple, black. This is why I keep the color uh, circles here for you. So when you hear Ao, black. Feo, it's like brown maroon, right? Because we do have red, don't forget that. And the red is for the redhead. If I take the cantaxanthine, which is red, it's a pigment available, and it gets oxidized, basically in humble layman's way, let's say it gets rusted, right? Like ion gets rusted, then you get orange from the same. And then, finally, you still have aomelanin if it was a black, black head mask. So, this area alone, look at how many colors you're dealing with. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next, you have the throat band, which goes all the way to govern the mask. It's wider in the bottom, and then becomes almost one to two milli on the top near the crown. This is pure aomelanin, black. Then, the back of the Golden Finch, which is the classic, which is green. The question is, what does it constitute of? Well, it has a, a structure feather, which is blue. And then, lipichrome, which is lutein, which is yellow. That's why you see, or you hear, lutino. You hear lutino. What does lutino mean? Yellow. Yellow. Lutin ino. Lutino. For those who breed society finches, cream ino. Cream ino. Cream ino. So, lutin ino. Lutino, it means yellow. Back is all yellow, mixed up with blue. Right? And then you have some black aomelanin there. Question for you. What's the truth of the black green color? Yellow, yellow and blue mixture. Very good. Yellow and blue mixture. There you go. Yeah. So you have the yellow and you have the blue, and the result of them two coming together is green. 
Then another question. How come I have some classic birds that are beautiful green backed? Some of them are wishy-washy green backed. Maybe it do more than a normal bird requires. Or maybe black. Yes, the level of the humidity and the culmination. Exactly. Why I started with this presentation is for you to know that a lot of the time you see a golden finch with blue feathering. That's the blue dominating over the yellow. yellow. Yes. Instead of showing green, he has blue. And then somebody will run and write in the Facebook, I have a new mutation. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. Go back to the previous slide where I said verify, get the facts right. Because the moment you run to the mass audience, you screw their heads. We don't want that. We want to be humble and walk on steady path. So the truth explains what your eyes see. If you have too much blue, especially on the wings area, or you have greens. Have you ever seen a pastille bird that has black feathers? Yes. Yellow, and then you see black. Yes? yes? Because of this equation, because of this formula. The bird was not a good classic bird. Then when the pastille coming from that bird is also not good. So it's always good if you're a color breeder, if you love colors, please select your birds carefully. Or you breed albino, up to you. But if you want to enjoy the colors, you do it properly. I have some good examples for you as well here. The tail, in case you notice, on the classic bird will be aqua color and then it will have white and then it will have black yes so the combination of all will be there including some lutein pigmentation between the upper covert the breast itself is a combination of the blue structure feather with pheomelanin right so if I have this with that, that's the reality of the purple breast. Yes. The combination of the two, subhanAllah. So people think that it's purple, per but it's not. If it was purple, you will never get lilac breast or white breast. It's a mixture that gives you purple, okay? So try to remember how important blue is in the bird's body because it's almost all over right and then the flank area will also have some pheomelanin in it okay we see yellow but if you pay extra careful attention to a good bird to a champion bird you will see that this area of yellow is brighter than this area of yellow so you notice that this is just yellow which we call lipochrome yellow lipochrome is a family lutein is the specific color and then in this area another lipochrome in this case is white this is the uh, lower tail coverts let's talk a little bit about how does the feather of the golden finch looks like and very important because as breeders you want to pair the best male with the best female but the best with the best is not what my eyes see always. I have to examine the feather quality of the male and the feather quality of the female. So let me give you an example. This is a classical typical feather. It's how it looks like. So this is the feather. If you look at the calamos or the barb, if I may say, sorry, the calamos, then this is the zoomed area. In the calamos itself, I have replica, but on a smaller scale, which is called barb. If you zoom into that area, you end up being here. Remember, we said kajur? Kajur, right? So this is the leaf of the kajur-like tree, right? And each branch, which is in this case the barb, again, you have more of that. This is any bird Allah created is like this. Now. What's the difference between Goldian and let's say Frill Canary? You know Frill Canary? Yes. 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 
Okay, it's like, you know, it's like somebody who has long hair came out from shower by doing this to his hair, you know, it's like feather everywhere, right? So in those kind of birds, the actual hooklets, barboils are very long, very long. This is why when you pluck a feather from those birds, you will see it's like a full fan, complete feather and soft, very soft. In Gordian finches, the impact of the feather is based on two pillars. One, gender. Two, the actual pigment, the color. These two factors, the gender of the bird and the pigment are the two factors that are responsible for shaping the feather. Let's talk about the gender. Here I have a sample of how the male's feather looks like. Here I have a sample of how the female's feather look like. And this is the normal, standard, typical feather. Let's do a quick comparison. So what I have, I have longer barbs in the Goldian finch. This gives the bird the ability when he's dancing. Have you seen the Goldian finch when he's dancing and posing? He becomes like a peacock. Look at the head, it becomes round. How? Because he has the ability to have long barbs. So the actual feather can stretch, can stand, right? Compared to any other bird that is there. A pigeon, for example, doesn't have it. He relies on the corp, right? So we say, sorry, the crop, right? It will blow it up. So in golden finches, it's about the feather itself, how it moves. Then also, if you look at the end, he does not have barboils. Barboils are small like curls on the edge of the feather. And this is the difference between the Goldian finch and birds like the zebra finch, English type. For those of you who breed zebra finch, you see the English type, it's all feather, big, buffed up. As for the females, she has very short hooklets. So when you have the feather, there is no chance for more color to come on the top because it's very short. So, and then the barboils, which were not existing in the male, they are also not existing here. And I'll give you a pictorial example of this. On the other side, we look at the pigmentation. So, this is male and this is female. These feathers are from the head, okay? Head feathers. Red head, black head, orange head. If I look at the red head, pay extra attention. Rich, red, what happens as it transits? Becomes lighter, lighter, and then it gets met with who? It gets met with black, black. Remember when I said in the beginning, there is aeomelanin in the head? So this is the male. Look at the female. You see the feather relatively shorter, much shorter. How big is the male? How smaller is the female? Look how tall are these. And this is what I meant when you have the bandwidth for the male when he's singing, his feathers, because they are long, they support his posture. The female doesn't have them, so she can't, right? On the black head, what's the difference other than color? What's the difference in the look of the feather? Speak up. Other than color, what is the difference in the look? Look silky type, thank you so much. That's what I'm looking for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the black feathers to be the strongest in the family. Who breeds pigeons? Did you notice that the tips of the pigeon, the flight feathers, the primary flight feathers in any classic pigeon, they are black? The pigeon looks gray. You catch it, bring the feathers out, and you see it's all black. Why? It's created so that the bird can carry its weight. These are very strong feathers. These are not like those feathers. 
So how they can be strong if they are fluffy? They are strong when they are, as you said, silky-like. They are like very sharp, very functional, like sticks. That's the power of black in the bird kingdom. Every black color you see, you always notice that it looks like this. And these are life examples of how the Gouldian looks like. Now, the rest pretty much looks the same with the exception. You also notice that the feather length are slightly different. Then you come to the orange head. Look at this. It's very different. Similar to the red, but more loose. Right? So the point is that the feathers get impacted by the actual gender of the bird and the color. This is why people will come and say, so I have a redhead hen. What's the best male for her? You decide. If you want loser feathers, then you cross orange with red. What happens? You get loose feathers. Okay? You want to balance the bird. You want to balance them out. You introduce black. Black is king, as they say. It will bring the feather back on track. You want fluff, you want buff. You go red and orange, for example. Okay? So, this is, continuing on the orange head example, this is a classic orange head male. And this is how the feather of the head looks like. You could clearly see <clears throat> that there is quite a significant portion of the yellow or lutein when I have this type of feather accompanied with pheomelanin, right? Yes. And then the aomelanin is there and this is nothing but the residual of the feather. When I have this feather, looks yellow, but then I have yellow over yellow over. Part to season one, workshop 2023 PGC, coming on next week.